Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, we're going to be doing a quick little video about a couple of quick little books. We're going to be talking about the first two books in the Murderbot Diaries, which are the first two that I have read so far. Uh, this is the Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. This is the first volume here, all systems read. We have also got here Artificial Condition. And these books are tiny little guys. This one here is 149 pages. You can get through this in an hour and a half or, or something. You know, you got a free afternoon. Read all systems read. You can do it. Uh, so these books are about uh, a security unit. See, in the future, uh, when you go on a scientific scientific expedition, and which is what happens in this uh, in this book here, there's a scientific expedition that's going to this other planet, and it's on this other planet doing a survey. The company that these scientists work for, they make you take along one of these guys, which is a security unit, which is basically a robot. Now, think about these security units. They're cybernetic organisms. They have Hum they have human parts, basically. Um, so they're part biological and part robot. And uh, they look like, underneath all this armor, they look like human beings, uh, but they're machine, more machine uh, than, than human. Uh, they're manufactured. Uh, so the scientific expedition in this book is on this planet doing a scientific survey. They've got their security unit with them, but the security unit has a secret. You see, before they ever went on this mission, in, this pre in a previous mission, this particular security unit was working at, what was it? It was a mining facility. It was working, working a, on a, at a mining facility with a bunch of miners, and something went terribly wrong, and this security unit just happened for some reason to go nuts and kill a whole bunch of people. Uh, and the, the company that owns it was so cheap that they just covered it all up and they just wiped its memory and threw it back out there to work again uh, because it's too expensive to get rid of one of these guys, apparently. But something about that experience changed the security unit and it was able somehow to override its own governor module. And in doing that, it made itself independent. So it's an independent, sentient being. Now, none of the miners, none of the miners, none of the uh, scientists on this particular mission in this book know this. They just think he's a big clunky robot. They, they don't know that uh, Murderbot uh, is sentient. Now, Murderbot calls himself Murderbot because of what happened uh, at the mining facility. Uh, really, really wants to know what happened, doesn't know because uh, its memory was wiped. And it is an it. It's not a man. It's not a woman. It's an it. As far as we can tell, it's a sexless being. Hey, quiet over there. I said quiet. Sorry about the alien that lives in my house. It is still yelling at people outside the window, especially when I try to do a video. It's really a pain in my arse. Naughty alien. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, so it's a sentient, uh, sentient uh, robot, basically. Now, it doesn't want really anything to do with humans. It's really kind of antisocial, uh, just wants to hang out by itself. It watches television shows in its brain. Uh, it, it calls it, it consumes media, which I guess we've, we've heard that phrase too much in our lives. But that's what it does. It just wants to hang out by itself, not have to deal with people, and consume media, watch TV shows in its brain. Uh, but occasionally, like a lot of the rest of us, we just can't do that all day. We have to go to work, and this, this poor murder bot has to do the same. But it's a really interesting character, uh, just because of that. It's really like, sarcastic. It's more... It's more human than most of the human beings in this book. Uh, and, and we can instantly relate to its antisocial tendencies. And it's, um, it's wanting to just, you know, do its own thing and 
not hang out with people and it's socially awkward it hates social situations always wants to keep its helmet on um there's a lot of that i think that we just as readers a few of us are kind of like that just a few and we can kind of relate to that instantly but of course you know how things go in this type of story this is a really kind of an adventure story there's a lot of action uh, of course something goes terribly wrong and our security unit here murderbot has to go into action to protect its humans now if there is a weak point in this book it is that the humans are not that well defined uh there's there are descriptions of the of the people in this book um but there's really not too much to them uh so the characters the human being characters in this book we don't get like a ton of backstory or descriptions about them it doesn't really not work it kind of works because the focus is on murderbot and uh it, this is murderbot's kind of view of these people which it really doesn't want much to do with anyway of course by the end of the story it feels differently uh and i i don't want to go into the story itself because i want you to have a a nice hour and 15 minutes of reading this and, and enjoying it and and you know enjoying the surprises of of the things that happen in this book i like this book a lot i like murderbot i like the character um, I, di I didn't mind so much that the, uh, that, the, that the other characters weren't that well drawn, that the humans weren't uh, that well characterized. You know, it's fine. It's fine for what this is. And I think it works when you're coming from a uh, murder Murderbot's perspective, uh, especially when a book this size. It's basically a little pulp story, really. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. I liked it. Well written. Lots of action. Good character. So, of course, I read the second one. And the second one is Artificial Condition. Now, in this one, Old Murderbot is on its own. It's out on its own mission. And its mission is it's decided, you know what? I really want to find out what happened at that mining facility. Why did I go all crazy and kill all those folks? I want to know. I want to find out. So that's what Old Murderbot does. Murderbot decides to go to that mining facility and find out the secret of what happened. Why did it get all murdery? Why did it become a murder bot? So that's what happens in artificial condition. It hitches a ride uh, on, on a big ship and the ship has a computer brain and the ship, the, this computer brain, this, this ship that it hitches a ride on, uh, it's, a, it's a research transport vessel and uh, Murderbot calls it art, and you will find out why it calls it art in the book. But art is actually turns out to be a really good character. It becomes Murderbot's friend. Murderbot was reluctant. Murderbot's not good at having friends, but it sort of becomes friends uh, over the course of this teensy tiny little book. There are humans in here. I thought the humans in this particular book were better characterized than the book than the, the humans in the first book. Uh, they just did a better job. Uh, Martha Wells did a better job. There were fewer of them. That might have made a difference. Of course, Murderbot has to get involved with people and end up protecting people because that's what, you know, that's what Murderbot does. And at the same time that Murderbot's doing that, Murderbot finds out, you will find out, at least partially, the secret of what happened at that mining facility. So, pretty good. Really good follow-up to All Systems Red. Uh, I like the character of Art. It's odd that the two most finely drawn characters in this book are both robots, basically. Uh, but I guess that's sort of fitting. So, Artificial Condition, another excellent Murderbot story. I look forward to seeing more or reading more Murderbot stories. And these things are tiny, teetsy tiny. Um, so they won't take any time at all to read them. Now, there is a common complaint about these books that I've seen echoed about on the old booktube, and that's they're too darn expensive for what you get. Now, this is a tiny little paperback, and this one runs uh, full price at about at fifteen dollars. So this is a 149 book for 40, 149 page book 
for $15. This is a hardcover here. This is $18. This is all American currency. If, if, if you live in Canada, this is about $670. So, you know, if you live in Canada, it sucks. But for us here in America, it's $18. Now, this is a legitimate criticism. These things are pretty expensive for tiny little stories. However, you can't lay that on Martha Wells and I can't really, I can't have that affect my review or my thinking of the story itself. The story itself is pretty good. Um, is it worth the money? That depends on how much money you've got to spend on books. Uh, it's really good. Uh, it's something you might want to read again one day. Um, it's that kind of story. I could see reading this a couple times in my life. Uh, so who knows? It's up to you. I mean, like I said, can't blame Martha Wells for that. Can only blame Tor. Blame Tor. I mean, if I wrote a 150 page story and Tor book said, Hey man, we want to make a, you know, hardcover of your teensy tiny little story and sell it for 20 bucks. You know, uh, I would say, okay. You know, that's what I would say. Um, so really can't blame old, uh, old murder bot for that. The stories themselves are really good. So if you think you might want to spring for the spring for the stories, and I'm, I'm sure they're cheaper on ebook. If you do the whole Kindle thing, I'm sure they're cheaper. I'm not sure how much cheaper because I haven't checked, but I'm sure they are. But just for fun, and these are just fun, quick, pulpy science fiction stories. But at the same time, the character of Murderbot is really kind of cool. Now we can all relate to Murderbot. We all just want to hang out all, all by ourselves and watch TV. Um, but now we have to go to work just like Murderbot does. Great stories here, a lot of fun. I recommend them. So there, quick little review of a couple quick little books. Um, yeah, so I will see you next time here at Stately Vaughn Manor when I talk about something else, which I'm not sure what it's gonna be. There are a couple other things I'm gonna be doing uh, in the near future. Uh, going to be doing a, a video on William Hope Hodgson sometime in the near future. Not sure when, but I am going to be doing it because more people should be talking about William Hope Hodgson. He's hiding behind that picture. All these books, I got the collected works of old William Hope Hodgson. So we're going to be talking about him sometime soon. Uh, also going to be doing a review of Wuthering Heights. Yes. Wuthering Heights, Heathcliff on the moor. So yeah, that's gonna be coming up. So yeah, catch you soon. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you once again at Stately Vaughn Manor.